and welcome back to More Than The Score, presented by Dubuque Bank & Trust. I'm Brendan West. I'm your host this time. Uh, Steve-O was unable to make it today, but um, we're joined here by the big chief, Jim Leitner, sports editor. How you doing? Good, yourself? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, Jim has been knee-deep in some uh, big research here into the Player Safety Initiative. Uh, it's part of the USHL. Um, I don't know if you guys saw Sunday's piece, but of course you could check it out. Jim, uh, talk to me about how maybe this topic uh, was was brought up to you and, and, and why why you felt there were some legs to this story here. Well, the Player Safety Initiative something, is something that uh, I've kind of been tracking for the last four years uh, since they introduced it. Uh, and me personally, I've noticed that the quality of play has gotten better. Uh, it's gotten cleaner. It's got in, it, you know, I think it's just more enjoyable to watch because you don't see as much of the cheap stuff. And, you know, there's a little bit more of a respect factor amongst the players. So it's something that I've kind of had my eye on for the last four years in terms of how, how the, the uh, player safety initiative has gone. But really what kind of prompted me to do the piece was uh, there'd been a lot of talk about the drop in fighting in the United States Hockey League. And it's actually dropped from, in the last four years, it went from 86 fights in one season. Uh, this year there was 86 fights, but four years ago there was 286 fights. So there was a huge drop in the number of fights, and a lot of people were really celebrating the fact that the, the fighting was down. Yeah. But, you know, my piece actually kind of delved into why the fighting was down. And, you know, the player safety initiative is a big part of that. You know, by playing the game cleaner, by not having as many, uh, you know, cheap shots and stuff like that, the game, there's really not as much of a need for fight as, fighting as there was four years ago. So that's really kind of why I, I did it. And it's kind of a two-pronged uh, approach to doing that story. And, you know, those are the two big reasons why I decided to do it. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I found a lot of really eye-opening things um, in there, you you mentioned the fighting. Um, also, how uh, you 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 mentioned in there too about how players are sort of um, um, since there's there's less fighting, players are kind of getting away with with some other stuff that they weren't before. And so there was there was sort of this dynamic about how how yes, it's probably good that fighting is is has decreased, but but there's it's also changed the way the game is refed a little bit too. It is, you know, there's a little bit there's more. Uh, maybe a few more little cheap shots behind the behind the play or you know guys like to chirp a little bit like to talk you know after the whistle to kind of get under a guy's skin because they know there's not that that element of fighting in as much anymore so uh you know that is kind of a little bit of a downside of it but i think the referees in the ushl have done a nice job of handling that mm -hmm. uh you know they you know if a guy knows he's not gonna have to fight you know he can do that a little bit more, but the referees have handled that by handling or handing out more unsportsmanlike conduct penalties or 10-minute misconducts to kind of nip that in the bud. Uh, so that's I think that's worked so far. It's not a perfect system by any means, and I don't know that it'll ever will be a perfect system. But those are ways to kind of address that. And you know, like I said, I, I think the game is much better now than it was four or five years ago it's much cleaner it's much more enjoyable to watch so you know granted you have some little negatives here and there but you know i do think it's a better game all around okay uh, you know uh, jim is obviously our resident fighting saints expert our resident hockey expert um but i i, I want to know you know through this whole process um, was there anything that maybe was eye-opening to you, uh, something somebody said that maybe was, was really, uh, y you know, just, just kind of a big revelation for you as you were covering this? The one thing that uh, I talked to a couple of referees, and one of the things that they said was, you know, it used to be that, you know, players would, you know, after they got whistled for a penalty, they, you know, they'd kind of argue that call. Uh, and now what you hear more, a little bit more often is, players will come up to the referee and say, yeah, that was a penalty, I agree with you, but can you call it something different? Because if I get too if I get a next elbowing penalty, I'll get suspended a game for that. <laughs> so that's kind of one of the things that was kind of, I thought that was kind of interesting, kind of funny, but uh, it, it shows that the players are aware, you know, of their actions. They're aware that, you know, if they have X number of elbowing penalties, they're going to get a suspension. So uh, I think that shows that the, the player safety initiative is working, and it shows that uh, guys are aware that they have to clean up their act a little bit. And 
Uh, but that was the one thing that kind of struck me as uh, as kind of funny. Awesome, awesome. Well, um, if you guys happen to miss that article published on Sunday in our sports section, you can visit TH Online and get all the information there. It's a great article. I highly recommend it. Um, transitioning here a little bit, you know, uh, Jim, you're also on the baseball beat. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about, uh, you know, we've got the state tournament right around the corner there down in Des Moines. Uh, talk to me about what what maybe you're seeing here at the local level? Who's got some? Who's got some legs to maybe make a run? Uh, we have, you know, quite a few teams here in the area that have a nice chance to make it down to Des Moines. Uh, we're actually one month away from it. Uh, it's it's hard to believe that it's that uh, that close and that the season's, you know, a little more than halfway through. But, you know, I think there are some nice teams around here that have a chance to make it to Principal Park in Des Moines. Uh, you know, starting out in Class 4A, uh, Dubuque Senior is really having one of its best seasons in program history. Uh, mm -hmm. They're leading the Mississippi Valley Conference. Uh, they were, you know, 15 and five entering this week, and uh, you know they're a team that has really nice pitching depth. Uh, Jacob Kerman, Tucker May, uh, T.J. Deerdorf. I mean, they they have a, they're loaded uh, pitching wise. And when you have a staff that's as deep as Senior is, mm -hmm. you're going to win a lot of games. You're going to get a nice seed for the postseason, so you're going to have a nice chance to you know to win a bracket and, and possibly go down to state. Uh, so they're a really nice team. Uh, Hempstead's a team that I think has a lot of talent. Uh, mm -hmm. They're they're still kind of trying to figure out how to put it all together, uh, but they're a team that could make some noise uh, come tournament time as well. Uh, Waller was has been ranked in the Class 3A rankings. Uh, they've got some nice pitching depth as well. Uh, and they've been hitting the, the heck out of the ball yeah. all season long. So, I mean, I think they're a team that's, you know, when they get to 3A and, you know, have a chance to play in the tournament, I think they have a chance to, to make a run too. Yeah. Uh, and then below that, uh, you know, we go to Class 2A, uh, Dyersville, Beckman, and Cascade. Uh, you know, it seems like yeah. every year <laughs> you can say that they're a team that's going to have a chance to make it to the state tournament. Uh, but I think this year, this year is another year that they, they definitely can. Uh you know, last year, Cascade defeated Beckman in the sub-state championship game to make it down to Principal Park. Um, and if everything aligns the way it should, they would probably have to play each other again in another sub-state final yeah. uh, this year. So uh, it's a great rivalry, probably one of the best rivalries in any sport in our area. Right. And, uh, you know, it's always fun to see those games. But they're, they're two teams that I think have a really good chance to make it down there in 2A. Yeah, I mean, it seems like with every sport, I I just you know think about basketball. I mean, it was it was Beckman versus Cascade to go to state. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it seems like it always comes down to those two every single year. Um, so it's just it's it's fantastic to cover, obviously. It is, you know, and it's a lot of fun. Great two great communities, too. Uh, a great rivalry. I, I think it's a friendly rivalry. Uh, some people might not agree with that, but it's a <laughs> you know it's a really good rivalry, a fun rivalry to cover. So uh, looking forward to it. You know, the bad thing about that is that means that the baseball season's almost over when we get to that point. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, the the last month, of July, is always such a fun month of baseball to cover because you know it's high stake games and uh, you know there's so much uh, so much intensity on the on the diamond. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we look forward to more coverage there. Uh, that's going to do us for this edition of More Than the Score, presented by Dubuque Bank and Trust. I'm Brendan West. This is Jim Leitner, the Big Chief. We'll see you next week.